Good morning everybody and welcome to a wet and quite horrible Lithgow. Um, we have had amazing uh, rain in the last week and a half. Um, not so bad where I am fortunately, but I've had uh, 225 millimetres of rain up to this morning from Monday the 15th. Now, uh, there's a lot worse. Uh, so this rain stretches from the south of Queensland all through New South Wales into the north of Victoria and there's massive flooding, massive, massive evacuations. It's a real mess, so really I'm actually quite lucky, so I'm not complaining. Anyway, we're going to do a little bit of a little bit of a job on the Model T today um, to allow a bit of 21st century cruising. I know that I did the, on the last video I put the uh, electronic eye timer in. <laughs> this is nothing like that. Uh, <laughs> This one is just to allow uh, charging of phones and uh, other electrical devices. Now, this video is actually very much courtesy uh, of a friend in the US uh, who has a YouTube channel, uh, Paul Shin. Uh, he has Model A's and um, <clears throat> he does some fantastic videos on Model A's, uh, working on those. But what he just did was he installed the same thing. Um, in his, because the beauty of uh, most model, uh, modern phones and electrical equipment, they actually don't require 12 volts to charge, they only require about 5. And of course the Model T is a 6 volt system. So we'll get on to that in a second, I'll just give you a quick look at what I'm planning to do with what and where, and uh, then I'll do it, and then I'll show you the after. Um, the job after that, I'm not going to take you all the way through it. Uh, you can watch Paul's video for that one. But a little bit of update on Marianne La Diane. Uh, still haven't got to her brake lines yet, which is a bit of a bugger. But here they are. I've got this box here. And here are the brake lines. So these are, that is one of the rear brake lines. Um, so that in there goes into the wheel cylinder. Uh, this portion, coil portion, actually goes through the cross tube of the rear axle, so that allows it to pivot, and then that goes to the, the junction in the middle. So what's happened, um, these flared nuts, I, I don't know, I reckon they're made out of butter, I know I've said this before, but the ones in it were seized, and they just fell apart. So I bought a whole set of new brake lines, so I'll get, eventually get to that. Um, anyway, back to, back to the Model T. Hello, Mr. Blobby. Um, yeah, Mr. Blobby, he's not doing anything interesting. He just goes to work with me every day, sits parked at the, at the station and, uh, yeah, waits and then drives and then I drive him home again. So, okay. Um, there's the modern piece of boring stuff. Excellent car. Oh, wait a minute. I can't get through that way. Excellent car, but yeah, just boring. And I don't like all the electronics in it, to be honest with you. You know, I want to be able to drive a car, not have it drive me. Anyway, that's another story, another bone of contention. So, what are we doing today? So, effectively, what I'm going to do is install this power outlet, or what me as a, uh, a boomer would say was a cigarette lighter socket, uh, into here. So then I will be able to just plug in an electronic device, for instance, I have an iPhone, I'm sorry, I'm an Apple person, and uh, I can have it up here on the windscreen, um, and, you know, for navigation, for speed, for whatever. But, so I'm going to install it into this board, which is the base of the seat. The seat sits on here. This is a thick board, nothing in this side. Now, the smart ones of you, know, of you will have noticed that there is actually a 12 volt battery. So why am I not just taking the battery of power from that? Well, the reason I'm not taking the power from that is that is not charged by the car at all. That is charged purely from a 12 volt charger plugged into the wall socket and I charge it once a year or so because as you can see from all the little lights, it's still fully charged anyway. Why have I got that 12 volt? Ah, well, there's a story behind that. Uh, there's always stories behind everything, isn't there? Um, anyway, so why have I got the 12 volt charger? When I bought this car, it had been converted in the 70s to run on 12 volts. It was running a modern coil and a modern, for the 70s, uh, distributor. 
Now, the distributor is not one of these angled drives, as most of the American guys and a lot of the English, Australian and other you know, Model T guys will know. What it was, um, they used a Lucas distributor cap with a base, and it mounted on exactly the same spot as the timer, in exactly the same orientation as the timer, and just sat there, but anyway, it was rubbish. So the decision I made was to convert this car back to 12 volts, as some people would say, as old Henry made it. Uh, sorry, back to six volts, as old Henry made it, uh, with uh, coils uh, and the magneto, which works on mine. But, stupid me, had already purchased this 12 volt electronic blinker flashing unit. So when I changed it back, I thought, oh God, what am I gonna do now? You know, these are not cheap, they come from the US, so of course, you know, not only that, but we've also got to pay the freight and the exchange rate. So, you know, they end up at a couple of hundred dollars. I thought, well, I'm not going to do that. So for under a hundred dollars Australian, I bought a 12 volt battery, uh, which simply powers my blinker unit. Um, I've probably shown you before, we've got this tiny little switch here. And that annoying noise, that annoying sound is the blinkers. Anyway, um, so yes, and that, so it powers purely the uh, blinker unit and oh, I'd probably charge it once a year. Honestly, it doesn't need anything. So what am I gonna do? I am going to, and hopefully there's enough light here, to, oh, the screen, put it onto my six volt Optima battery with its little knife switch there, which isolates it. And that way, um, I will get six volts through to that power outlet. As I said, the, the, uh, the electronic devices actually only need um, five volts to start charging, and we'll demonstrate that at the end of it. And that way, that will be always under charge from the engine when it's running. So it's not an issue. I'm not pulling extra power out uh, of that 12, little 12 volt battery that I've got. Uh, and that way I shouldn't run out, you know, for instance, We've got a national rally to Western New South Wales, September 2022. And, you know, that's going to be, <clears throat> how long will it take me? Probably take six hours or something or more, a bit more to drive from my place. Um, and back and running around for a week, well, that 12 volt battery will power those blinkers. Uh, if I just give it a little top up beforehand, I won't have to touch it again. Whereas if I'm pulling power out for, Oh, you know, iPhones, iPads, whatever. Um, it's going to eat through that battery. So I don't want to do that. So I'm going to run a unit through. Um, so what I've got here, back to this bit here, uh, is I've got an inline fuse. I'll make up more wiring for this, run it through, and I, it'll actually connect through to the uh, car side of the uh, knife switch. So it'll be isolated as soon as the knife switch is thrown to isolate the battery. So there won't be any issues with that. Um, so it's got an inline fuse anyway, as I said, and I'm going to install it down into here. So that will sit flush like that. And then that covers up. So you won't even really notice it, it's, it's black. So anyway, I'll get on with that and I'll come back and film the results later. Thanks for that. Okay, guys, we've um, done the wiring. I'll just show you that there. Bit Heath Robinson, but that's right. I wanted to keep it above the muffler. Uh, so that's it there. So we'll put the knife switch across. Connect the power. We'll take my light. Uh, oh, and there's my big garage dog, Edsel Greyhound. He's always in the garage with me. Usually asleep or trying to sleep if he's not trying to jump in the car. And we come around here. So, there we go. There's the unit there. Bit hard to see. That's it there, I've got it plugged in. Um, I think you can see, yes, there's a little light on. Show there is power. Now, the big test. Opens the phone. And we do this one-handed. This will be good. How do I do this one-handed? And there we go. It's charging. There we are. Charging. Beautiful. It's exactly what I need. So there we are. I now have a power outlet 
in my car. So, pack that back out, put the plug back in, and there we are. Nice little power outlet on the floor of my Model T. All connected in the back, fuse block in there. I put a 15 amp fuse, I had to join it there, run it through the floor, straight underneath. Well out of way of everything. Anyway, so that's it. Thanks guys. See ya.